Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. Well, uh, let's go ahead and just open your Bibles. We'll see where we land. Hallelujah. Just get them open. At least look like you're, you know. Now, let me say this. Bring your Bible. Now, I know we put the scriptures up on the screen. And I'm going to tell you something. That's nice. That's convenient for those who didn't make it and didn't bring your Bible to church or for whatever reason or somebody comes in they don't have a Bible or if we use a different translation, that's all great. But let me say something. It's good to have your Bible because a lot of times you'll read the verse above or the verse below or whatever and something, God will speak something to you out of that. Plus, it's good to see it in your Bible. Amen. Now, where, now what slide was that on last time I was at church? Now, you need to know where it is in your Bible. Amen? So I, I encourage you, bring your Bibles to church. Bring highlighters. Get pens. Write in your Bible. Now, mine has nothing in it. This is a, I'm breaking a new one in. They get, the, the youth dunamis gave me a new Bible uh, to preach from. They got tired of me watching my pages fall out. <laughs> Plus, you know, the, my other Bibles were study Bibles, and so they weighed five times the weight of this one. So I'm up here, you know, like, you know, you got to do curls. To, I mean, you're getting your exercise. One, two, three, one, you know, with your, with your Bible. Uh, but I encourage you, bring your, bring your sword right in it. I can't write my Bible. Get rid of that one. Go to our bookstore. Buy one of ours. You can write in those. They're, they're writable Bibles. All right? Well, let's, let's get back to being students of the Word. I said students of the Word. Today we're going to be ministering on, and a lot, this has been stirred in my heart for several days, and I've been looking over the scriptures and meditating on the scriptures for several days. Actually, been kind of rolling over me since about like sometime last Sunday night, and I've been waking up in the night and thinking about and meditating on this, and and uh, God speaking to me. Hallelujah! You know, we're, we're in the church, and in the church we're facing lots of stuff. You know, the Bible says this. Paul wrote to the church, says, "Know ye not that in the last days perilous times shall come." Now, we can go off and minister on that about, you know, all the evil that's in the world, and we've done that and talked about the people who are, you know, the, those are, that are misused the things of God. That's not our the point here. The fact is, perilous times come. I said, perilous times come. The Bible tells us to take on the whole armor of God that may be able to withstand in the evil day. What's that mean? Evil days come. Now, you can stick your head in the sand and sing drop like an ostrich and sing drop kick me Satan through the goalpost of life, and he will accommodate you. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> we have to be aware that there are evil days, that there are perilous times, and that, 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 that here's, a, here's the wonderful thing about the Bible. It tells us what things are coming. It tells us what's going on, but it doesn't leave us there. Right. Oh, glory to God. You know? Ah, prophesy bad and evil and tough, and I mean, you're, gonna, you're, you're going through the mud and through the flood, and you're just going to suffer, and you're going to grovel. Well, that don't help me none. Because when tough times get here, you can figure it out all by yourself. There are tough times. Come on now. Now, this is not the church of the frozen chosen. This is the church of the living be believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the firstborn from the dead. He's alive. Come on, church. Help me out here. Breathe. My God, breathe and exhale and say hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> but to understand this, look, look what John says to the church in 1 John. Chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, I've got to say something here. The new mantra in the church is, you just got to love everybody. You can't judge stuff. You can't say anything about error. You can't correct what is wrong. Paul said, try the spirits. I mean, John said, try the spirits. And if anybody walked in love, it's called is John because he was called the apostle of love. 
He's the disciple whom Jesus loved. The main theme of his first letter is God is light, God is life, and God is love. Amen. He's the one that gave us the greatest scripture of all time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John is the apostle of love. And he said, try the spirits. Yes. Why? There's many false prophets gone out. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to take a side journey for just a moment. There's been some things said recently in the Christian world by, by a couple of different Christian forefront people. One was the wife of a, of a large church. And, I, and I'm not here to call names because, listen, number one, we don't need to demonize people who are in error. Because right. it's not them that's the problem. It's what they said or they taught. Amen. It's the doctrine. Right. That is what has to be dealt with. Now, if, the, if what they're doing is maliciously trying to hurt the body of Christ, that has to be dealt with because they're emissaries of the devil. I don't believe these people are emissaries of the devil. Right. Amen. So we're not trying to hurt them. But when you stand up and say, and, you know, that, that worship is not for God, it's really for you, and obedience is not for God, it's really for you, so, it makes God, because you're happy, it makes God happy, and that's what it's really all about. So we'll come and worship and obey God for yourself. And people all over the country get mad, and, they, and, and, and see, here's the problem. They got mad at them. Instead of coming out and saying, you know what, what they said was wrong. We pray for them, we love them, because number one, I believe they're born again, I believe they love Jesus, I believe that they're called of God, I believe they've done a tremendous amount of good. But I don't believe it. You know, you can't agree with everything. And when, they say something, when somebody says something that's egregiously wrong, what's said has to be dealt with. Let's not make it personal about the person. Let's make it about correcting or making error corrected and giving truth and, and putting and exposing with truth so that people don't get misled by what was said. But don't demonize a person. That's wrong. Now, if, they're, if they are, like I said, if they're emissaries of the devil, they may have to be dealt with. I don't believe they are. All right? Now, um, we worship God because we worship God because we love God. We don't do it. And, I understand, and, and then they came out and said, well, what I, I, I may have articulated this better, but I stand by what I said. And only it's ridiculous to think that I meant something else. And only cynics and critics are the ones who are disagreeing. Well, here's the problem. I, I'm more upset about that than I was what they said. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they could have diffused the entire thing by going, I misspoke. What I said and what I meant to say, but, and the congregation of our church understands this, and, and, but, and I was speaking in the parameters of that was that, you know, it, there is benefit to, to worshiping God and obeying God for ourselves. There's a benefit in that. You could have said that and said, you know, and so I apologize for saying it in a way that was taken wrong. No, they came out and just blasted everybody for saying they were wrong. I have a problem with that. Because you had a real opportunity just to diffuse this thing and say, and they, said, they did say I misspoke and could articulate it better, but then blasted everybody for disagreeing with them. No, what you said was wrong. Yeah. Now, maybe within the parameters of a congregational thinking or whatever, they may have understood what you meant. I still think it was wrong. But should have been handled in the way of I was wrong, I apologize, here's what I was trying to say. And, you know, Okay. It was wrong. Second is the, the uh, there's a musician. They wanted some, some, some Dove Award, and they're, they're out trying to say that they don't, you know, that the, the Bible is not really true, that Noah really didn't happen, you know, that the Genesis is a myth and all this kind of stuff. But you can still be a Christian, love people, and not believe the Bible. No, you can't. Young people, you hear that stuff, and it is pure goobity gawk. Now, I'm not trying to hurt them, but what they say is garbage. Jesus, somebody put it out here the other day, they said, you know, they said that, you know, that, that all that stuff about Adam, Adam and Eve weren't necessarily, you know, they, they, they basically blew the Bible away and because their scientific mind says none of those things are improbable. Yeah, and being dead for three days and raised from the dead after three days is improbable also. It's basically scientifically impossible. So either Jesus did, so the Bible is full of miracles, signs, and wonders. So what they said is wrong. Okay. So we, in the, I'm going to get back to my sermon, and we may go back and start our sermon over. I don't know. We'll maybe put this out. On, we'll just put this on the Internet. People need to hear it. I'm not against anybody. I'm not trying to hurt them. Amen. But when they say stupid stuff, that one, the first one was they say they misspoke. I'll accept that, but you need to correct it. The second one's stupid. Yeah. Just flat out, the Bible is the Bible. Christians, we accept the Bible as, a, as, as the God of, God's word, and we accept it by faith. <clears throat> you do not have to have archaeological evidence to prove it's true. As a matter of fact, then you've left the realm of faith and you've gone into the natural realm and you only believe it because you can see it. 
So we've got a lot of people trying to prove the Bible's truth through archaeological evidence and different things. Folks, it's not about doing it through archaeological evidence. Amen. It is a book of faith from the beginning. Amen. And if Adam and Eve weren't who they were, then Jesus, you know, that Jesus' genealogy just got messed up in the Bible. Because Adam's called the son of God in, 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 in the genealogy of Jesus. Thank you. Back to over here. All right. Perilous times come. Where was I on first John? There we go. Um, try the spirits. Sorry. Many false prophets have gone into the world. Hereby we know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Stop here for a second. Now, what, what, what does Christ mean? He means the anointed one. And we know when you go study back over in Isaiah, it says this, that the yoke shall be destroyed and the burden removed because of the anointing. Or because, I actually think in the literal it's the fatness, but it means the anointing. So we, we come to define the anointing as the yoke destroying, burden removing power of God, and Jesus is the anointed one. So he has the yoke destroying, burden removing power of God operating in him. What is the Antichrist? Opposite. It is the antithesis. If the anointing destroys yokes and removes burdens, the spirit of Antichrist enforces um, yokes, amen, and supplies burdens. So there is a spirit out there trying to bring you into captivity and bondage through an Antichrist spirit. So everybody say, help me, Jesus. Whereof you should heard that it, come, it should come, and even now... It is already where? In the world. So don't be deceived. Don't get messed up. Don't think, you know, uh, that's coming when the, you know, the, 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 the church gets raptured and the, and the uh, beast appears. Then the, no, the spirit of Antichrist is already here. It will take on an embodied form at some point in time. But that spirit's already operating. It's already manifest. Everybody say it's already manifest. Ye are of God, little children. Now, listen to this. He tells us to try spirits, that, he, that false prophets are come, that the spirit of Antichrist is here. He says, now, ye are of God, little children. Somebody raise your hand and say, glory. glory. Say, I'm of, God. I'm of God. Say, I am of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And have overcome them. Whom? Those that are operating in the spirit of Antichrist. What have we done with them? We've what? Overcome. Going to? Overcome. Some sweet day in the by and by. Okay. When we all get to heaven. Well, a day of rejoicing. That when the roll is called up yonder, we'll be there. I love all those songs. Just grew up singing them. Amen. But I got news for you. Our position of victory and our position of authority is not futuristic. It is present. Somebody say it's present. How do you know? Because he said you have overcome them. The apostle John establishes to the church that the evil spirit, the spirit of Antichrist that is working in the earth right now has been overcome and you are part of the overcoming team. Glory. Glory. Now, they had four runners by now. That's enough to shout over. Now, listen, not because you're some slick dude. No, what does it say here? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because, stop. There's a reason you've overcome. There's a reason that the spirit of Antichrist does not have authority over you. There is a reason that you can stand up and say, just like our, our, uh, my, our pastor's father-in-law, Brother Beatty, used to say. He said, Brother Beatty, how are you doing? He said, I'm shouting the victory. <laughs> There's a reason you can shout the victory. Amen. Amen? And the Bible gives it to us. Look at here. You've overcome them, little children. Amen? You're of God, little children. You've overcome them. Now, first thing you'll shout out is, I'm of God. 
I said, you ought to be shouting about the fact you're of God. Somebody shout over the fact you're of God. Now that was weenie-fied shouting. My God, we're of God! And have overcome them. Those who operate under the spirit of Antichrist because we're of God and we're his children. We've overcome them. But the reason is greater is he that is in you. Come on now. I said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who's in the world? The spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. And the greater one is on the inside of you. <laughs> My God. He said you've already overcome. John wrote over another chapter, exactly one chapter later. First John chapter 5 verse 4. It says this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. But the reason you have great faith abiding, you know, we get the word, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word, but see, we've been dealt the measure of faith. There is one in you right now. Say, there's one in me right now. Come on, let's get, let's get kind of country. Right now. It's right now. It's on, he's on the inside. Right now. Amen. I love this. Try the spirits. There are false prophets gone out. Oh, my. Amen? There's a spirit in the world called the spirit of Antichrist. But you're of God. Amen. I just, remember, God, John would call and, and talk about his dear children. And John taught in tones of, of a father to his children. That's how, that's how John's letters are. And I can see him sitting there uh, in, in kind of a symbolic way writing to the church, probably the seven churches. On, you know, on that circular road. Hallelujah. Writing to them and saying, no, look, guys, there's false prophets. Try the spirits. The spirit of Antichrist is out there. But I got a word for you. You're of God. Little children. Come here, guys. Come here, come here children. You're of God. Yeah, all that stuff's out there. You're of God. And he didn't stop there. He just didn't say you're of God, you know, because <clears throat> then some bozo would come along and say, yeah, you know, and God's using them to test, test us and try us. No. He said, you're of God and have overcome them. Amen. But then he didn't just leave it there and tell them they had overcome. He told them why yeah. they have overcome. Because the greater is he that's in you. I mean, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now. I said, come on now. They got all kind of crazy dances. They do at ball games. I want you to know, there's a greater one on the inside. I said, there's a greater one on the inside. Hallelujah. Not only is he greater, his Bible says this, greater is he that is in you. Where is he? I mean, he's not up in heaven. We don't have to go up and shout, Lord, get, get the Holy Ghost down here. We need some help. He said, greater is he that is in you. He took up his residence on the inside of you. Glory to God. And when you walk around in this world where the spirits are evil, where there are many false prophets, where the spirit of Antichrist is in operation, oh, my God, he said, you're God's child. You've overcome. And the greater one, the greater one, it's on the inside of you. <clears throat> and he's greater than that spirit of Antichrist. Amen. What's he saying? The one who comes to restore yokes and burden does not have, any, have the power to enforce that on your life because the anointing abideth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have an unction from the Holy One. Hallelujah. 
The Holy Ghost is on the inside. Somebody said, the Holy Ghost is on the inside of me. I said, say it. The Holy Ghost is on the inside of me. He's the greater one. Who's he greater than the spirit of Antichrist? See, Jesus, the Messiah, came to destroy yokes and remove burdens. And the greater one's there to enforce the destruction of those burdens, those yokes, and the removal of those burdens. And the spirit of Antichrist does not have the power to bring them back unless you let him. So today, we're not going to let him. Hallelujah. Go with me, over, if you will, over to the book of Zechariah. Hallelujah. Probably where your Bible was stuck together, mine was too. I had to unstick it. Glory to God. Amen. The angels appeared to, to uh, Zerubbabel. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we got Zerubbabel in the Bible? Zerubbabel, 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 and Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, six. But the angel is asking us a question. He gets down here in verse 6. Then he answered and spake and said unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord, Yahweh, unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We've been trying to figure out how to get through the tough places. We've been trying to figure out how to get through the famine. We've been trying to figure out how to fix all the mess by might and by power. And God said, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Of host. Word Lord here, you see it in your Bible, it's the, cap, it's the, the four caps. It is the... Um, Translation of YHWH, we pronounce it Yahweh or Jehovah, depending on what, what camp you're, circle of thought you're in. Um, the German, any, any German leaning, dramatic language leaning, we'd call it Jehovah, you know, uh, using the same, because you know, they put J H V H, okay, because in German, you know, the, the V and the W are interchanged, and the, there is a J, there's not, there's not a J in Hebrew, okay? Why? Okay, why is where you find J? So they, they changed that. See, Jesus is not Joshua, it's Yeshua. Comes out, the Greek translation becomes Jesus, but in the, in the Hebrew, it's Yeshua. There's a Y instead of a J. Okay? And so the, the, the German thought, the dramatic thought line is Jehovah from the same four letters, and then Yahweh is the other thought line. But they're, they're from the same, what do they call it, tetragram or something like that? It's a tetragrammatum. All right, close. I'm in the ballpark. It's a tetra doohickey. Okay? But this word means the covenant keeping God. I said the covenant keeping God. He says, not by might and not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, the covenant keeping God of hosts. All the names we know, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sitnikinu, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shama, all those are from that Y-H-W-H hyphen and the other words. Right. The Lord that heals thee, the Lord that brings peace, the Lord is your righteousness, the Lord is your salvation, the Lord is your banner of victory. Hallelujah. And here he says, you, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. And I want you to know it's the same word to you. You do not win by might. And you do not win by the power of the flesh. You win by the spirit of the living God, the greater one abiding on the inside of you. And I challenge you this day to reach down on the inside of you and begin to stir up and begin to tune in to the Holy Ghost who's on the inside. <coughs> Take those bills. Take those uh, doctor's reports. Take all that and this, get, start trusting the Holy Ghost for wisdom, for counsel, for guidance, for understanding, for, the, for his empowerment. Amen? Look over in Psalm 20. Y'all getting blessed? If you're not, go home. Everybody about stay. No, I'm just messing with you. If you're not getting blessed, something's wrong with you. 
The 20th Psalm says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Oh, thank God. You know what? Stop right there. How many, how many have been all right, right, apparently right now in the day of trouble? Come on now. Anybody in the day of trouble? Anybody facing trouble? Anybody just been recently in trouble? Anybody know that trouble could be around the corner? All right, well, listen to this. The Lord hear thee. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord hear thee. <laughs> Woo! His ear is not closed to you. He's not hiding out saying, I, I wonder if Dum Dum's going to make it today or not. Oh, well, I'm too busy fishing. <clears throat> the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept the burnt sacrifices. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. Come on, church. We haven't been rejoicing enough in God's salvation. We've been grumbling about the problem instead of rejoicing in his salvation. Come on. Give up the grumble. Put on the rejoice. And shout. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I will bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Get your hee-haw banner down. Gloom, despair, agony on me, deep, dark, depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Take it down. I said take it down. Go out to your backyard and burn it. And set up your banners. I will put my trust in the Lord. The Lord hears me in the day of trouble. Hallelujah. I am one who the Lord turned the captivity of Zion for my shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll have double. We will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill. Listen to this. We better start making some petitions instead of griping. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. I'm still getting used to this Bible. Excuse me. Glory to God. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Who? L-O-R-D capitals. Y-H-W-H. The covenant-keeping God. The God of heaven and earth. Not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. I know I should have had somebody running by now. I get back in Psalms. I'm out in Jeremiah. Don't wrinkle the page of my Bible. I like it. Listen to this. Now they said all this stuff. The Lord fulfilled all that petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. Now that's talking about so and so, you know, and so and so. Hallelujah. You know, I just, you know, if I was anointed, that would apply to me. Oh, Jesus. First John chapter 4, 2, 
verse 27, but the anointing that you received of him abideth in you. 1 John 2, 27, the anointing that you received of him abideth in you. The Lord saveth his anointed. The anointing that you've received of him abideth in you. Come on now. I said the anointing that you've received of him abideth in you. And now I know the Lord saveth his anointed. Y'all going to get that today or tomorrow. Because if you got it today, you'd be shouting. My God. But the anointing you've received of him abideth in you. What does that make you? Come on now. What does that make you? Anointed. Now know I that the Lord saveth. Now, Dr. Schofield in his studies, in his study Bible, says that both the Hebrew and the Greek words translated save and salvation carry basically the same meaning. So the Hebrew version of saveth would also be carried out in the Greek sozo, to save, to heal, to deliver, to preserve. Hallelujah. God, look what the psalmist said. He know, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. John says we're anointed. Somebody else get up and dance. My God. Hallelujah. The Lord saves his anointed. Listen, when he goes on, he didn't stop there. I mean, that was good. He will hear from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Woo! Glory. I said glory. He saves his anointed. Are you here? He hears from heaven. When he hears from heaven, remember he said here, the Lord hears. Now see, it's one thing for him to hear and leave it there. Why well, he heard. He heard, but he heard with the saving strength of his right hand. The right hand of God is the right hand of his power. Ooh. But like the karate kid. Ooh, glory. Come on now. Why does he hear with the saving strength of his right hand? To deliver you. To bring you out. <coughs> Next verse. Some trust in chariots. Some in horses. Now you understand that that day, if we write this today, we would say some trust in in uh, Apache helicopters and T1 tanks. But now in that day, they trusted in chariots and they trusted in horses. Wow, a foot soldier did not stand a chance against a chariot and a horse. And they just thought, man, if I had a chariot and a horse, I'd be, I'd be you know, I'd have it. Some trust in chariots. Remember that old song? Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. I remember that song. Come on, you know, old charismatics don't remember that song. My God, we got to get some old charismatics full of, I mean, some new charismatics full of old charismatic stuff. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we. Why? Because he hears from heaven with the strength of his right hand. Amen. Are you here? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you here? Glory to God. But we will remember the name of the Yahweh, the covenant-keeping God, our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we. Folks, the devil's been trying to tell you that you're brought down and fallen, but the Bible says we are risen and stand upright. Point your finger at yourself. See, I am the one who stands and is risen and stands upright because I trust in the name of Yahweh my God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Amen. Look over, if you will, into the 33rd Psalm. 
No, no, no. Go to 2 Chronicles. That's after Kings. We've told you this before, that, uh, that first and second Chronicles could really be fourth, third and fourth Chronicles, and first and second Kings actually in really old Bibles and historically was called first and second Chronicles. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. That's man's stuff. It doesn't matter. The name of the book doesn't matter. What's in it? Now, we we'll read verse 1. <coughs> At, <coughs> After these things, the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, Sennacherib, Sennacherib. That's not a snack, it's Sennacherib. Entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes, with his mighty men, to stop the waters of the fountains which were uh, without the city, and they did help him. So they were gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And he strengthened himself and built up the wall that was broken, raised up the towers and another wall without, and repaired Milo, the city of David, and made darts and shields in abundance. And he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together here in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably unto them, saying, Now here is a word that you can live by. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, for all the multitude that is within him, with him, for there are more that is with us than are with him. Stop. Don't keep reading. You have to understand that you and God are the majority. Now, when Satan fell, he took a third of the angels. Guess what? That means two-thirds stayed behind. That's two to one. There's a two-to-one ratio on the angel deal. Amen. Come on now. Yep. So all those third angels are outnumbered. Everyone got two, they got to fight two heaven angels. And, and remember, if you go back and study, in Ezekiel, uh, Lucifer, Satan, the bright and morning star, tried to overthrow heaven by saying, I will ascend my throne into the heavens, and I'll be as the most high. And then God said, I'll cast you as profane out of my mouth. And guess what? Jesus said, I beheld Satan as light and fall from heaven. Guess who has the, uh, the up, upper hand on confession? <laughs> Satan tried it. God did it. God won. There's more that be with us. Say, there's more to be with me than be with the enemy. Glory to God. <laughs> Where was I? 32. 30. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there is more with us than with him. Listen to verse 8. Here it is, folks. With him is an arm of the flesh, with, but with us is Yahweh our God. To help us to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. I wanted you to notice something there. With them was the arm of the flesh. With us. What? Is the Lord our God. Now if you go back and study David and Goliath, they pretty much said the same thing. Am I a dog that you would send out such a ruddy youth to fight against me? I will feed your carcass to the fowls of the air this day. And David went out and said, what did he say? He said, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to feed your carcass to the fowls of the air this day. Guess what? Arm of flesh confession is no match for the word and the power of the Lord our God. And David took out a stone and slew the giant and then cut his head off. Took out John Goliath's sword and cut his head off. See? Goliath was trying it. David did it. And there's a reason David could do it. 
because he wasn't trusting in his flesh. My people, my beloved, my children of God, I want you to hear today, you do not have to trust in the arm of your flesh because there's a greater one on the inside of you this morning. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. It's not with the arm of flesh, but it is by the Spirit and by the power of God that we win and overcome. Yes, there are things we're to do. We're to speak the Word. We're to confess the Word. We're to live in the Word. But we're to put our trust in Him and not in us. I know you might be facing tough times. Stop trusting you and start trusting God. Amen. That's right. God may tell you to do certain things. I'm believing God for prosperity. And God says, go give so-and-so 50 bucks. God, I don't have any money. No, no, yeah, you're trusting in your flesh. He didn't tell you to give them 50 bucks so you wouldn't have any money. He told you to go give them 50 bucks so you have seed in the ground. And he could come out and increase that and give you a return. Not so you could go broke. I got three people shaking their head. Five of you looking at me like a dog who just got a new bone. <laughs> and the other five looking at like a dog that you, he just realized all the food's gone. My dog does that. She sits there. We're sitting at the table. And if somebody moves an arm, it's there. And somebody else moves an arm over here, it's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. And then everybody gets done, we're just kind of sitting around. She sits there like, Really? Some of y'all hear that right, this, right now. They're doing that to me. Really? <laughs> this is Bible. The greater one's in you today. Hallelujah. Come on, church. I said the greater one's in you today. And it's not by your power. It's, and actually, the one translation says, not by might, not by armies, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Come on. By my spirit. Here Hezekiah says to the people, hey, they got the flesh. We got God. I got collectors. I got bill payers. I mean, bill collectors. I got people calling me. I got this. I got that. All they got is flesh. I can't make enough money this week to make the difference. But God... I said, but God, I said, but God, I said, but God, we got to get our trust back in God. Well, if I work 80 hours this week and get 60 hours over time, I might be able to make it. You can't do it. But God, I said, but God will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able, but will with the temptation make a means of escape that you may be able to bear it. What's that mean? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. It's not a crushing burden. It's a you're making it burden. You're overcoming burden. You're not going under burden. You're the winner burden. Some people think they can just lay down and not do anything. No, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about trusting the Holy Ghost. Amen? The Spirit himself helpeth Helpeth. That comes from three Greek words put together. It means take hold together with against our infirmities. Hallelujah. I know I should have had some runners today. I'm going to pray God for runners. Anybody get blessed? Amen. Psalm 44. I'm oh, sorry. Look at Psalm 33. We're going to kind of quit here in Psalm 33. I'm trusting you got ministered to. Anybody get ministered to? Anybody going home renewed? Anybody ready for a fight with the devil? I don't mean go, you know, you don't have to go looking. He'll show up without you looking for him. But be ready when he shows up. Put on the whole, whole, armor, whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So when the evil day shows up, you're ready. Are you here? My, my, all my pages are stuck together in this Bible. They really are. I like it. Psalm 33, verse 13, uh, verse 12, verse 11, verse 10. The, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, 
and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh down from heaven, and he beholds the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looks upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Now, don't you think for a second, God don't know what you're going through. Why don't he do something about it? Well, stop trusting in chariots and stop trusting in horses and remember the name of the Lord your God. Remember, he hears from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. He knows what's going on. You got to do something to get him moving. What do I do to get moving? Release some faith. Start talking. Listen to this, verse 16. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. Ask. No, no, no. Ask. Um, Samson. Thank you. When his hair got cut and the anointing left him, he wist, he wist not that the spirit of God had departed from him. And when the Philistines fell upon him, they bound him. He could not do anything about it. Up until that time when the spirit of God was upon him, they couldn't do anything with him. No strong man, a mighty man is not delivered because of much strength. And horse is vain thing for safety, neither shall the driver any, uh, uh, he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon all that hope in his mercy to do what? To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. Why? He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. My God. Think about the psalmist, the things that they encountered, the things they went through, things they came up against. Hallelujah. And then begin to speak. Begin to speak about God. Begin to get their focus on God. Sing that song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full. In his wonderful face. And the things of earth shall grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. I obey and do and worship because I'm looking to him. He's my all in all. And when I look to him, they that only have an arm of the flesh pale in the comparison to the saving strength of the right hand of the God of heaven, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he who spoke it all into existence. I've made mistakes, Pastor. <clears throat> I set myself up to be in trouble. I made financial decisions that got me messed up. Okay. Repent. Now look to Jesus. I said, now look to Jesus. Make some adjustments, but look to Jesus. He will deliver thee with the arm of his salvation. Somebody say glory. glory. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the greater one who abides and indwells us. Hallelujah. We thank you that he who was and is and is to come is our Lord. We thank you that the great and mighty Holy Ghost, the Paracolitos, that Jesus said would come, is now taking up residence in the, in, in the lives and in, in the uh, hearts of the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because the greater one indwells us, we win. We've overcome the spirit of Antichrist. We've overcome the one that's in the world. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. 
We decree it and declare it and thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Every head bow, every eye closed. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, he's come to the door of your heart and knocked and you've not let him in, but today's your day. No longer will you live in the depths of despair, in the realm of defeat, but God summons you to the family of, of, of God to live the life of victory that he, he designed for you. If you're here today, you're not born again. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Lead you in a prayer that brings you out of Satan's kingdom into God's kingdom. The Bible says Jesus delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. If you're here today, would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Anybody? Look across the room. Look, all right, look again. If you're here today, say, Pastor, I'm I know I got saved at some point, but I'm backslid. And that ain't real hard to figure out. If you backslid, you slid backwards. You went the, back, you went the wrong way. If you're here today and you backslid, you want to get right with God, raise your hand, I'll pray with you. Anybody here today? All right. Everybody look up at me. Say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Say, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus. The Holy Ghost indwells me. And I do not trust in chariots. I do not trust in horses. I remember, I remember the name of the Lord my God. Hallelujah. Well, somebody give him a shout. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.